I know it's youth service, and uh, but I, I think it's it's right. And I felt this all day long. I had a I had another message prepared, ready to go. Um, but something just began to grow on me all day long today. And uh, brother Adam, are they getting from that table? Uh, amen. Um, and I feel like teaching on this subject tonight: how to teach a home Bible study. How many are glad that somebody taught you the word of the Lord? Amen. And uh, in fact, I want to ask a couple questions here. Um, first of all, if you just raise your hand, if this is the case, how many of you somewhere in the process of you coming uh, to church, getting filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, getting solidified in the truth, uh, how many of you were uh, taught a home Bible study? By that, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean it was at your home, but it was, it was not a church service. It was a Bible study, whether at the church, at your home, somewhere. If that's the case, raise your hand. In fact, let's do this. If you were taught a home Bible study, I would like you to stand tonight. Everybody stand. Now look around. How many knows that Bible studies work? Bible studies work. You can be seated. Amen. And uh, there are some folks here tonight that I've, I, they are members of this church uh, that I've taught Bible study to. I see Brother Tom Montoya. I'll never forget the day I knocked on his door. He had called the church, and uh, he, he, had, he had been in church years ago as a young man. But God was stirring him up, and uh, we got a call here at the church, and I at a venture, I, I, I don't always do this, but I took one of our guest follow-up gift bags. He had never been, but I thought, I'm going to go to that house. Knocked on the door. He was not available. His son, Carmelo, opened the door. And uh, Carmelo didn't know anything about truth, apostolic church, and so on. So it was just kind of like, all right, thanks, dude, for the bag. You can go now. <laughs> I thought, what a bummer. So I walked out, and I'm halfway to my car, and here comes Brother Tom booking it out the door. Hey, hey, wait up. And that was the beginning of a, a long Bible study. And we prayed back through. I believe Brother David Smith was here. Was that when your boys got the Holy Ghost? I don't remember exactly. And uh, taught him Bible study around that table in that apartment on, S yeah, where it was, Fontana. Amen. I remember that. And uh, some others that could not be here tonight, Brother Brian Hatfield's working, Brother Kenny Berg. Many of you know Brother Kenny Berg. He was, he was in his late 70s when a family member of his um, said this. He had a, had, a, had a relative that was interested in knowing about God. Would I, would I go see him? And I thought, you know, I, I w I'm happy to do that. But it was kind of just random. I didn't know if he really wanted <laughs> to me to show up at his house. And uh, eventually I called, and he said, yeah, come on over. And, and that began a relationship with one of the neatest human beings I've, I've ever met, Brother Kenny Berg. He's a neat man. We sat in his kitchen for months. And uh, over time, I'll never forget, some of you remember, he was standing right here, that old codger. You listening, Brother Kenny? He said he'd be listening tonight. That old codger that I love, this church loves, was standing there, and he began to speak in other tongues. As the Holy Ghost filled him, the Spirit gave him the utterance. And, and we continue that Bible study for a long, long time. He's not here tonight. I see Sister Socorro. Wave your hand, Sister Socorro. Amen. And Eva, wave your hand. Come on, put that hand up there. Come on. Alex, right there. And now just recently, Laura just got the Holy Ghost just a week or two ago. And I had... but. And I, my wife, it's a long story I could tell you about them. My wife prayed them into that house. And they, the house was empty. They were, it, was, it was being sold. And my wife said, let's pray that people that are hungry for God will move into that house. And it, it's an amazing story. One day my wife, I was going to give her mommy time. I was with the kids. And I see her pull out of the driveway and stop in the middle of the street talking to somebody. And I'm so aggravated. I'm thinking, listen, we're doing this so you can have some time alone. And I got all these children. Help me, Jesus. And she sat in the street for probably an hour. And I, she, I don't even know if she went anywhere. I think she eventually just, I'm talking right in front of my house. I see it the whole time. She backed up and pulled back in. I said, baby, what are you doing? 
I, I, my sacrifice. I, I, I can't believe this. And, and, uh, and she said, you'll never believe what just happened. She said, what we've been praying for all this time. She, Socorro had walked out in the street and, and began to pour out her heart to her about how she wanted God. Since she was a child, she had been hungry for God. <laughs> and for months, she was in our living room. It taught her a Bible study along with my wife, with her kids. And uh, today they're, they're here in the church. Sister Brianna Hinkley, wave your hand. Hey, Amen. Uh, we, Sister Courtney and uh, Sister Chloe, I believe it was Sister Chloe that actually first met her at Cal State. And uh, she came to church and, and uh, just uh, she had a, a background of, 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 of being of Christianity. But it was all, it was, this apostolic stuff was all new. And uh, for, for, for months we taught a Bible study. And it was this year, I believe in January, Brother Prado was preaching at SCC conference. And I thought, man, it's time for her to get the Holy Ghost. Had like nine people get the Holy Ghost. And I'm like, all right, it's time. And I walk over there. I'm like three feet away. And I look, and she's already speaking in other tongues. As the Holy Ghost filled her. I'm just here to tell you Bible studies work. And uh, I'm, this, is not, this, is not, this is not Pastor bragging somehow. But I do want to stir some juices in you. Right now I'm teaching Bible studies off and on. Some of them are more off than on. But to Andrew, to Julio, to Robert, to Adolfo, to Manuel and Mariella, to Paris. And pray for that one. I love Paris. Uh, I love all these. Jeff and Lorenzo and Dave and Austin and Philip and George and Jesse and some others. And uh, I'm just excited about what God is doing in this church with people teaching Bible studies. In fact, right now, how many of you whether it's, it's, it's happening every week or it's a, supposed to happen or it's kind of, you're in, a, in kind of a valley between, but you're actively in some kind of a Bible study with somebody, if you would just uh, raise your hand. Look at that. Oh, wow. That is, wave that hand. That just makes me happy. I just want to run the aisles. I'm going to tell you, this is exciting what God is doing. I'm hearing more and more stories about Bible studies. There's another one, a group Bible study starting up tomorrow night. And uh, we're, we're excited about, uh, about that with some of our brand new babies. I got one last question before we jump into this. How many would like, whether you are or not, to teach a Bible study? Would you raise your hand? Raise it high. Hallelujah. Now that is awesome. I think we ought to clap our hands and thank God for what he's going to do. Amen. Amen. And so tonight, I know this is different. If you're a guest here tonight, this is different. But I will tell you, Lord willing, at the end of this service, and I'm not going to go too long, we are going to have an altar call. And if you're here and you need the gift of the Holy Ghost, you can get the Holy Ghost tonight, just like all those people I just named did. Amen. So in a minute, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to teach a Bible study with somebody. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm going to teach parts of two different types of Bible studies. Now, first thing, I want to answer some questions as we get into this. You ever wonder who should teach a Bible study? Okay? Should, who should teach a Bible study? You know, should everybody teach a Bible study? This is my philosophy. I believe that if you have repented of your sins, received the gift of the Holy Ghost, and been baptized in Jesus' name, you can teach a Bible study. Amen. If the Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, they'll cast out devils, they'll lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. I do believe that you can tell somebody the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, now there, there ought to be some wisdom to that. I think there's some just, uh, if, you're if it's a woman that needs taught a Bible study, you need to have a woman teach the Bible study or a couple. If it's a man being taught a Bible study, a man ought to do it or a couple. Or perhaps if, if, uh, if, if uh, maybe there's several people in the Bible study, of course, that would be fine as well. But, but this is my deal. Everybody can teach it. You can teach a Bible study. I don't know how many times I've had people say, well, you know, I've lived for God for 20 years, but I'm scared to death. Can I tell you, you know more scripture than some whole nations. That was not an exaggeration. Some of you know more Bible than some whole nations do. All you really need to do is be able to tell them, repent, be baptized in Jesus' name, and you need to get the Holy Ghost, and when you do, you will speak in other tongues. 
Amen. Now, if you're, if, you're, if you're brand new and you're going to somebody with a doctor of divinity and a, another faith, maybe you do need to take somebody with you. But don't back up and say, I can't do this. I can't tell you uh, how, how neat it is, the different ones this year that have, had have, have just kind of jumped into it. And have said, you know, I can do this. Some of the greatest soul winners in this church just did it. And now they're winning people to God. Everybody said amen. amen. So you can do it. If you're afraid to do it, just go with somebody that is. But don't do it for years. <laughs> go a couple of times. In fact, you will have been to a Bible study after tonight. And so you can do this. If you can read, how about this? If you can point you can teach a Bible study. I was trying to remember today, and I didn't get a chance to tell my dad, but there was a, a man somewhere back in the south. I want to say it was possibly in Jackson. He, 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 was, he was very, very slow. I'm talking, he, he was, he was uh, mentally challenged. And yet, he would get a Bible study chart, and he would get people that would, would come to the Bible study, and he would just point at the pictures and have them read it, and he won a bunch of people to God. I'm here to tell you, Anybody can teach a Bible study. Worst case, just read it and let the Word of God work in their life. Here's another question I want to address. What is the purpose of a Bible study? Or let me say it this way. What are you trying to accomplish with a Bible study? Obviously, ultimately, it's to see people saved. But when you go into a Bible study... One of the key things you are doing, because people a lot of times are concerned, I don't know enough. I'm afraid if they ask me a question, I won't have the answer. You ever felt that way? If you didn't raise your hand, you know, come on. pastors felt that way. I, you, 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 that's all part of being human. And, uh, but one of the main things you're doing in a Bible study is becoming their friend. Becoming their friend. These two guys on, my front, on the front row here, can I just embarrass you, George, Jesse? They really are my friends. And, and it's a neat story with, with how God hooked me and George up. And now Jesse's here. And, and, and these, are, these are great guys. That's part of what a Bible study is. It's getting to know them. And, and, and ultimately, that's what we're trying to do is see people come and grow and be everything that God wants us to be. Another thing that the Bible study is doing is it's building up people's faith. I, I remember uh, a Bible study I was with in, and uh, I'll just say it this way. The, the, the wife was in church, the husband not so much, and the husband not at all. In fact, he, he claimed uh, to be an atheist. And I remember the conversation. I said, let's just do it because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know what I believe? You just keep teaching the word and faith is going to start flourishing. And over time, I, I, I got, <laughs> that individual ended up teaching Bible studies before he ever even had the Holy Ghost. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Another thing, thing we're trying to accomplish in Bible studies is to make another home Bible study ultimately. That's always in the back of my head. This person, they may not even have the Holy Ghost. I'm thinking someday they're going to be doing this. And once they get to the point where I'm seeing growth, maybe they've got the Holy Ghost now or been baptized in Jesus' name, I start planting the seed. Isn't that what we did, Sister Brianna? Kept saying someday you're going to be, and she is now teaching Bible studies, which is perfect, what is exactly the will of God. And, and so we're, we're trying to duplicate ourselves because there's a lost world that needs to hear this truth. Again, I want to re repeat another purpose of, of, of Bible study is, again, to reach lost people. Okay? I'm all for group Bible studies, and there's nothing wrong with having a group Bible study where, uh, where other saints come. I think, that's, I think it's good. Sometimes it can actually be very helpful. But the purpose, this is what I'll tell people, the purpose is you got to get some lost souls in there. All right? We, we got to get some lost people in there. And it's a great time to bring new people to grow and let them grow and saints to grow. And, and again, if you get another experienced saint there with you, it can, it can increase your boldness and faith and so on. But ultimately, it's to see pay people filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, and on their way to heaven. That's what it's all about. Amen. And, and there's a lot of good that happens in Bible studies. And I believe in group Bible studies. I think it's powerful. Sometimes people ask me, what do I think about cell groups? And, uh, and I, this is my philosophy on cell groups is, is I, don't, I don't have a problem as long as you're not taken away from church. 
We don't need less church. We need more church. The Bible says in Hebrews 10 that we, uh, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And so I think there is some benefit to saints getting together. But again, let's get a bunch of unsaved people in the middle of that, see them be taught the word of God, then receive the word of God, then receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. That's what it's all about. And is there anybody that's glad that when you were lost, there was somebody that brought you the word of God? Amen. And so these are some of the purposes of, of Bible studies. Another uh, a purpose of Bible study is sometimes you feel like you're, you're not getting anywhere. But I'm going to tell you, this is what will happen when you're teaching a Bible study. Ultimately, you can be flipping through a Bible study chart. I have in here a little search for two, truth chart. This is just the one I happen to use. There's a lot of good ones exploring God's word, bringing men to Jesus, just a bunch of good ones, okay? This is the one I've always done, so I... I just stick with it because it works. They all work, by the way, all the apostolic ones. And, uh, um, but what I have found is this right here, it just starts, you'll see it in a minute, it starts with a breakdown of the Old Testament, tells you what some of the books are, how many there are, and so on. But this, and, and then it'll start telling the story of the Bible, Genesis with Adam and Eve and Noah and the flood and the uh, Tower of Babel and Abraham and so on, it goes through the Bible. But invariably, as you are teaching the Word of God, there will come a point where truth will hit them right between the eyes. You can be teaching about Daniel in the lion's den, but there will come a point somewhere in those lessons where it's like they are faced with a decision and it hits them right between the eyes. I'm telling you, truth is powerful. And truth is saving. And we aren't playing with something. This ain't some kind of multi-level marketing thing. This is Jesus' name, apostolic, one God, tongue-talking church we're talking about. It'll save them. And I cannot tell you the joy of being in that Bible study. Sometimes you're just flipping that chart and all of a sudden the lights come on and boom, they get a revelation of the mighty God in Christ. I don't, I, 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 Brother Brian Hatfield, I wish he was here tonight. I'll never forget when he started seeing the oneness. We were, this house, oh, it's right off Riverside Avenue. Street starts with an H. I can't even remember the street name. But I remember sitting at that dining room table. All the room, his roommates were gone, just me and him. And we're talking about the oneness of God. And he literally stood up out of his chair. Oh, you, you, you see Brother Brian praying like that? In that kitchen, he started praying like, he said, oh, my God, I can't believe it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. (laughs) He hadn't even received the Holy Ghost yet as the oneness of God hit him. I'm going to tell you, that kind of stuff will get a hold of you. That kind of stuff is addicting. That kind of stuff will make you want, oh, you'll wake up in the morning dreaming, God, give me another Bible study. I'm here to tell you that this apostolic truth is powerful. You just teach a Bible study and let the Word of God work. Is anybody again glad that somebody taught you? Why don't we clap our hands and thank God for the power of this apostolic truth. Amen. Amen. I'm going to deal with just a couple of, of other little deals you might have wondered about. How long should a home Bible study be? You ever wonder that? Okay. Not long. Not long. Now, there's times it goes longer. But this is my deal. I usually go about 45 minutes, maybe even less sometimes. Sometimes it goes longer, but I, this is what I would let much rather, I'd much rather leave with them wanting more than the next, because here's my deal. I'm not just wanting one Bible study. I want 12 plus. I want them, I want to see them come all the way, get repentant, get baptized in Jesus' name, get the Holy Ghost. And then I want to see them start getting settled in the church. And then I want to see them teaching Bible studies. I'm not just looking for one Bible study. I want a bunch of Bible studies. And I don't want it to be that if I'm teaching on a Tuesday night that they're thinking in their brain, oh, man, it was awesome last week, but three hours. <laughs> Furthermore, I don't want to be thinking that way. If I, if I, I only have so many three-hour segments of my life that I can give, I can give 
Let me just do the math for you. I can do three one-hour Bible studies in the time I can do one three-hour Bible studies. Did you get that? That means I've tripled my effectiveness all of a sudden. Now, there may be times you're doing a group Bible study. Some of you do them in the evening. It's fellowship. You bring food. I understand all that. But, but as far as like an ongoing type deal, you need to think about people's time. It's a busy world, and we want to, to, uh, to get a Bible. We don't just want one Bible study. Think of it this way. I want a series of Bible studies, even a one-hour Bible study. <laughs> And if you're a guest here, George, did I do this to you? It wasn't trying to bait and switch, but I mean, I, I said, you want to do like a, a Bible study? It only takes an hour. Well, it ended up being three Bible studies on that one hour. And then we ended up doing, now we're doing Search for Truth. And now he's going to Brother uh, Galen DaCosta's on Thursday nights and so on. I, I wasn't trying to be, you know, underhanded, but I do want to see them get a Bible study that goes on and on and on and on until uh, all, all that God wants to happen in their life. So keep, keep that in mind. Another question to ask is, and we often ask is, what home Bible study should I use? Which one should I use? There's a, you know there's a million out there, right? In fact, Brother Preston and Brother Michael Barrier wrote a youth series uh, of Bible studies, and it's a really good one. My wife uses it all the time, and, and I know many of you do as well. And uh, there's a lot of different ones you can use. Here's my answer. Don't stress it. Almost any apostolic Bible study will work. Almost anyone will work. And it kind of does depend on the person. Usually on my first Bible study, I spend a lot of time visiting with them. I, we sit down. I say, hey, how's it going? You know, what, 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 you know tell me about yourself. Were, were you working? You going to school? Okay, yeah, you working? All right. Where you work at? Really, man, what's your hours? Okay, they give you enough hours, and we just talk. And then tell me about your family. And, and sometimes they want to, you know, talk about things. I, I'm just trying to get to know them. And I, because, again, you win them to yourself a lot of times before you win them to Jesus. And so, and so it doesn't, it's not so much the content. Ultimately, there will become that, there will come that moment when the Word of God hits them right between the eyes. And they have a choice to make. But in that first Bible study, I'm just trying to get to know them. I may spend a few minutes. I may spend the whole Bible study doing that. And so once I get an idea, if, if, if I get a feel, maybe they've already received the Holy Ghost. Because a lot of times I'm getting people that I've found in the altar that have come to church, which, by the way, is a great place to get a Bible study. Uh, I know they're open, and I'll go right into a Bible study, maybe like into His Marvelous Light, that talks about the plan of salvation. Okay? And... Uh, uh, it, or if it's somebody that is open, I can tell they're open to anything. I'll go right into that. If, if maybe they've already got a, a background in, in truth or, or, excuse me, in, in another denomination, then maybe I'll, I'll approach it from, from something like uh, in, a search for truth that, that kind of just goes through the Bible. Trust me, the new birth is all through the Bible. Amen. You teach the Red Sea and it's baptism in Jesus' name. You come out of Egypt, you're talking about repentance. You talk about the cloud, you're talking about the Holy Ghost. It's all through your Bible. And so it, it, it kind of depends on the person uh, um, and, and, and so on, but, but it doesn't matter so much what you, what you teach. A couple more things before we, kinda, we do this Bible study here. How, have you ever wondered this, how do you get a Bible study? How do I get a Bible study? Anybody ever wondered how do I get a Bible study? I've already let the cat out of the bag when I said one of the best places to get a Bible study is right down here in this altar. When people come to church and they have experienced the power of God uh, and they have prayed and they, they've repented or maybe they just received the Holy Ghost or, 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 or maybe they've just been baptized, First thing, just as a church, this is what we do. We, we want to get to know them. We want to get their phone number, give them our phone number. We want them to know if you got a problem, we're here to help. If you got something that needs prayed about, we are here to pray about that problem. And, and you're building this. And so instantly you're trying to, and, and one of the questions I'll ask, I'll say, hey, how are you? My name is Pastor Booker. What's your name? Lily Adami. She says it's Lily Adami. Correct. Um, and, and then I'll, 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 I'll typically, if, if it's a lady, I'll say, hey, can my wife get your number or something? Or we'll get your number. We're trying to get the number. And I'll give them my phone number. And, I, and, and, and I'm trying to, I don't want them to walk out the door without some kind of contact. 
And so that's huge. And everybody in this place is a part of the net uh, of reaching for souls. One of the questions I always ask is, you know, if you, there's no pressure on this, but I'd like to let you know we do teach home Bible studies. That means that we can do it at your home. We can do it at our home. We can do, my wife and I can teach it here at the church. Uh, whatever the case is, we will, we will teach a Bible study. And, I, and then I just kind of leave it there. And then maybe a day later, a few late, I'll text them and say, would you be interested in a Bible study? And I can't tell you how many times they say, yeah, yeah, I would. Next question is, what's your schedule like? And so we try to work this out. If I just can't do it with my schedule, then I'll say, okay, I can't, but... I'll find somebody that can, somebody that, that's able. If you can't get some, if you can't teach it and you don't know anybody that can, then contact myself, Brother Gavin Barrier. We would be happy to get somebody to teach that Bible study. So everybody say the altar. This is a great place to get a Bible study. At church, meeting people, that's a great place to get a Bible study. Another great place to get Bible studies is Saturday morning. If you want to be a part of the phone outreach team at Inland Lighthouse Church, it's a great place to get a Bible study. We are calling people that have visited. We call them back, and we uh, offer a Bible study. We, in fact, last Saturday, we have somebody that we're going to be working with. I need to talk to you about that one, Brother Barrier. Um, there was a man that said he wants a Bible study, and he wanted to know how many people he can bring. And we said, you bring as many as you want. <laughs> and, uh, and so... That's a great way to get a Bible study. Guest follow-up. You know how we give those guest bags? How many have ever been involved in that? All right. That's a great way to get a Bible study. They've already been to church. They've already felt the presence of God. You go and just tell them, thank you for, letting, for coming to our church. We want to invite you back. And just we, we want to let you know that we'd be happy to teach you a Bible study. Would you be interested? Here's what I want you to know. Anybody can teach a Bible study. You can teach a Bible study. And the main thing you can do to get a Bible study is start praying about it. God, lead me to hungry people. I am here to tell you, God will give you a Bible study. Is there anybody that wants to teach a Bible study? Why don't we just lift our hands right now? If you are interested in teaching a Bible study, I want you to lift your hands and say, God, use me. Come on, let's talk to him right now. Oh God, in Jesus name, use this great host, many of them that are already involved. Use them, Lord, and use many more people in this house. In Jesus name we pray. And everybody said amen. How many thinks Justin needs a Bible study? I do. Justin, come here. All right, here's what we're going to do tonight. It is 8:41. I'm going to do something very, very ambitious. In the next 20 minutes, I'm going to be done by 9. I'm going to teach two Bible studies. And we'll, I'm really curious. Boom. I'm really curious to see how this will work. Now, there are two types of Bible studies. This is my Bible study bag. It's full of Bible studies. First of all, you ought to go to our bookstore and buy a bunch of these. Search, these are into his marvelous light Bible studies. I buy them by the score. I got a bunch of them. So that would be your first step. There are two types of Bible studies that I typically use. I mentioned already, you don't have to use these, but I am going to use uh, right now uh, Search for Truth. Brother Logan, if you could bring that one up. move our chairs forward so we can see this better. All right. Can you see it all right? This is what I will do. I will get in a place. I often use the conference room of the church. I'll set up my little deal and we will visit. How are you doing, Brother Justin? Good. Good to see you. You working? Yeah, you're working. Talk to him about that. Talk to him about his family. We'll spend as much time as needed and then we'll jump into the, this Bible study. This is how simple it is. I open to the first page. You can see it up there. Go to the part where it says the Old Testament, what is it? This Bible study is, is one that just goes through the Bible. Now, you see all that stuff on that page? Some of you are looking at it, and right now your palms are sweating. Your adrenaline is pumping. You're thinking, oh, what in the world? 
some of you, it looks like, you know, something you would give a, a, a you know, in third grade Sunday school. It looks very basic to you. But some of us are going, what? This is just too complicated. I, can I tell you what's on that page? <laughs> if you point at one thing and then flip the page, you've taught a Bible study. This is how pastor does it. I typically will go like this. Okay, open your Bible. You got a Bible? You came to a Bible study without a Bible? And then I start ranting and raving at them. No, I don't ever do that. That actually is a good time to make a point. Be very, very kind when you teach a Bible study. It's not time to beat them over the head with doctrine. That's good preaching right there. In fact, if I'm asked... If I'm asked a questions about holiness, usually when I start a Bible study, if they've been to church at all, it's one of the first things they want to know about. I usually will answer something like this. You know what? Yes, I would be happy to answer any question you ask, but I, this is what I would recommend. My, my main goal right now is to talk to you about, if I'm doing this Bible study, the overview of the Bible, but I'll, I'm happy to answer any questions. Or if I'm doing into his mark, I'm, I'm here to talk to you about the Holy Ghost. I really want to see you get the Holy Ghost, get baptized in Jesus' name. And those things will come. They're important. We believe them. But, but we'll talk about that down the road. If they push, 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 and really want to know, I'll answer. Because we got answers. It's in the Bible. But it's like way down the road. And I can about, about 19 times out of 20 get out of that question. And it's not because I don't think it's true. It's just the Bible talks about giving milk to babes. And that's exactly what we are to do. And so this is how I will start. I will say, um, right there you have a Bible. I'm going to pretend like you don't know anything. That's not to insult you. If at any point you want me to tell, uh, tell me to hurry up or get to harder stuff, I'll do it, okay? Um, but but I, I'm going to just pretend like you don't know anything. Usually that sets them at ease because they're thinking, oh, wow, good, okay. So I'll, I'll tell them to turn to the table of contents. And so they'll get there. You see that first page? The Bible's kind of falling apart, isn't it? So uh, this lists the books of the Bible. And I'll say it like this. Your Bible has two main divisions in it. I mean, I am this basic. Your Bible has two main divisions. And you, you probably know there's a bunch of books in there, but there's two main divisions, the Old and the New Testament. And I'm kind of watching them, all right? If I can tell they're like, you know, hurry up, I'm, then I'll kind of jump faster. But, but if not, I'll explain. In the Old Testament, it's... If I had to summarize what it is, it's everything that happened in the Bible up until the birth of Jesus Christ. The New, the New Testament is it's with his, his, his birth, his life, his ministry, and then things after that. But we're going to talk about the Old Testament. And I'll often, I'll start like this, you know, uh, you have any idea how many books are in the Bible? Sometimes they know, sometimes they don't. How many of you know how many books are in the Bible? Let's hear it. 66, all right? You know how many books are in the, the Old Testament? 39. And, and I'll say, here's a good way to remember. You look, there's three letters in Old and nine letters in, in Testament. 3, 9, 39. I don't point out the obvious that New has three letters and nine. Anyway, so, but there's 27 in the New, 39 in the Old. And then I just start talking about the breakdown of the Bible. There's 39 books in this Old Testament, and they, they're actually in a good order. Somebody put them in good order. And the first five books are law. I'll maybe explain a little bit about that. The next 12 are history. The next five are poetry. I might even give some examples of psalms and how the, the rhyme and the rhythm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's that kind of rhyme. It's not rhyme like Dr. Seuss. It's, it's just a, a rhythm of thought, a rhythm of, of, of cadence. And then there's 17 books of prophecy composing 39 books of the Old Testament. Now, here's what I want you to get out of this whole lesson that I'm teaching. You ever go to a family reunion? No? Okay. I have a family reunion that happens every now and then. All kinds of people show up. And uh, there's just, let's say it this way. There's certain subjects that just, it's not good to bring up at your family reunion, right? Politics, religion, you're going to have a big fight. And, uh, and because even in a family, there's going to be disagreements and arguments. And, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you this, that the Bible covers the most complicated, debatable subjects in the world. It covers theology, obviously. It covers philosophy. It covers all kinds of complicated things. But the Bible never contradicts itself. 
in spite of what you've heard. The, and, and that's really an amazing thing. It was written in different languages over a different time. There's approximately 32 writers covering 3,600 years of man's history in the Old Testament alone. All of these different writers writing in different languages. These pictures up here, you got a fisherman, um, you got a king, you got a, a farmer, you got a herdsman, you've got politicians, all these different people writing the Bible. But it never contradicts. How is that possible? Here's the answer. The answer is you got a lot of different writers, but there's only one author, and that author is God. And what you're holding in your hand, that is the miracle of the Bible. You can build your life on that Bible right there. And so, all right, you got that? How many books are in the Old Testament? You remember? 39. Good, good, good. And then I'll jump over to the next pages, and I'll just kind of click through a little bit, and I'll talk about the uniqueness of the Bible. The, the wonder of the Bible. You just keep cranking with me. And then I spend a lot of time on this one. How can we know the Bible is true? Because can I tell you, a lot of people are wondering, is the Bible true? But I'm going to tell you, there's proof in the Word of God. The Bible jives with science. I've got some science facts that I throw at them that's in the Bible. I talk about Ecclesiastes where it talks about the circuit of the, the winds and the circuit of the air, the circuit of the, the water cycle, all this stuff. Talk about the blood being the life is in the blood. Medicine, history, archaeology. I spend some time talking about the Dead Sea Scrolls and how God has protected his words. And then I spend a long time talking about prophecy and how, you know, one of the greatest proofs of anything of, of a prophecy, you know what a pro prophecy is? It's a prediction, Right? How do you know if somebody's prophecy is true? And I ask them that question. They kind of think, often they'll say, well, if it comes to pass. And I'll say, yeah. If I tell you that tomorrow you're going to find a wallet with $10,000 in it, how do you know if I'm a false prophet or not? If I find it. <laughs> Justin is on it. Justin said, if I find it. If I find the wallet, then I was a, a true prophet. If, I didn't, if, I, if he doesn't find the wallet, then I, I'm a false prophet. Well, the Bible is full of prophecy. The Bible has thousands of prophecies. And, and there's scores of prophecies about Jesus alone. And I'll give some, and some of the stuff that uh, Josh McDowell talks about as far as the unbelievable uh, unlikelihood of these things being fulfilled and the power of the word of God. That is all I do. And you can point at those things. And you don't have to say a single thing I said. Just point at it and flip the page. You're being their friend. You're giving them the word. Their faith is rising. I'm here to tell you there is power in home Bible studies. You can do it. Look at your neighbor and tell him you can be a Bible study teacher. All righty. Somebody be honest with me. Yell it out. What time is it? I don't have my phone. 8.50. 8 really? That's awesome. Is that right? I got nine minutes. This is awesome. So the next Bible study I often use is Into His Marvelous Light. Can you bring it up, Gavin? Don't leave. Uh, did I say Gavin? Logan. Into His Marvelous Light. Everybody say Into His Marvelous Light. I recommend you buy these. Our, our, our bookstore has a bunch of them. Um, go buy some. Have two or three. They're three bucks a piece. It's worth spending 10 bucks to win a soul. Put them in your car. Have several of them. And uh, I, I, this is how I teach a Bible study with Into His Marvelous Light. Okay, let's go ahead and skip. I, first of all, skip the first six pages. Don't tell Galen Walters I said that. He's one of the authors, good friend of this church. I go to Luke 24 on page number seven. And this is how I teach this Bible study. I have just skipped six pages of a one-hour Bible study. Did you catch that? You do it however you want. You may want to read every one of these. And I just simply begin to do this. I tell them this, the setting of this verse we're about to read is Jesus talking to the disciples. I guess I should teach my Bible study. It's Jesus talking to his disciples. This is after he has died, been buried, rose again. Okay? It's in that, there was like a 40-day gap between uh, his resurrection and before he ascended up into heaven. Did you know that? Okay, you knew that. All right, you're, you're, you're ahead of the curve. Okay, not everybody knows that. Very good, very good. We should have you preach one of these youth service deals then. You, you're ready to go. Um, and so we, we do, we do uh, this, this that he's doing right here. He's, he's talking to the disciples. And this is the last words that he will speak in his body, in his flesh, 
before he ascends up into heaven. Of course, Jesus is God in flesh, robed in flesh, walking among men, okay? If this was the last thing you knew that you would ever speak to somebody you loved, you'd probably choose your words pretty carefully, wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, well, I, I imagine, of course, Jesus is coming back. He is God, but he is going up. He is ascending into heaven, and he's going to come back as the Holy Ghost. We're getting ahead of ourselves there. But, but in, in the flesh, this is some of the last words he will ever speak. And so I, say, I ask them this question. Are you comfortable reading out loud? Okay, and sometimes they say they're, they're not, and that's no problem. Here, once you turn to page seven, they'll have one and I'll have one, and I give them one to go home, to take home with them. And I say, go ahead and read Luke 24, starting with verse 45, page seven, where it says, then opened he their understanding. You see that? Okay. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Okay. And I interrupt them quite a bit, but uh, I'll say, okay, so Jesus is literally giving them a Bible study. He opens their understanding, he teaches them from the word, and he says this, Guys, the reason I died and suffered and rose again the third day is for what I'm about to tell you. Okay? This is why I died on the cross. This is why you saw me bleed and be beaten in the crown of thorns. This is what that's all about. Okay? And then I have them read on. This is what it's all about. And that repentance. Okay, stop. We only got one mic, so we have to do this a lot. Let me get close. And that what? Repentance? Say repentance. Repentance. I have them repeat. That repentance, if we have another mic, we'll use it. And, and remission of sins. Okay, remember those words, okay? Okay, go ahead and read on from remission of sins. Should be preached in his name. In his name. That's in the name of Jesus, okay? So he says, I want you to preach repentance. Everybody say repentance. Repentance. And everybody say remission of sins. Remission of sins. In what name? In the name of Jesus. Say in Jesus' name. Okay, read on. Among all nations. Do it among all nations. Beginning in Jerusalem. And start in Jerusalem. And the Bible then says, and I'll just tell you this. I'm going to do it quick because we only got like two minutes and these people are ready to leave. Okay? The Bible says after he said that, he then ascended up into heavens. I mean, like, I don't know if it was in slow motion. I don't know if it just looked like he was getting taller. And all of a sudden, or if it was like super, like he was vacuumed into the skies, but he was out of there. And the Bible says they were just staring up into heaven. You know what happened next? Two angels show up. And these angels look at them and they say, why are you staring into heaven? Now, if it was me, I would have said, angels, the reason I'm staring into heaven is because he just took off up. I've never seen anything like it. He just ascended into the clouds. That's why I'm staring into heaven. But the angels look at them and they say, no, no, no. You need to leave here and do what he said. He said to go to Jerusalem and he wanted them to do what? Preach. What was it again? I act like I can't remember. Preach what? Re help me out here. Somebody Repentance. remember? Repentance. Repentance? Yeah. What else? Remission of? Sins. Sins. In what name? In Jesus' name. Okay. Do it among all nations okay and he even told us what city what city jerusalem Jerusalem. go to jerusalem and that's where i'll go to acts chapter 2 if you have your bible go ahead and flip the the next page brother logan go to acts chapter 2 i'm doing it even quicker tonight that's where i just tell him this okay then they go to jerusalem in acts chapter 2 this is where they are on the day of pentecost sometimes i'll explain what pentecost is but i don't have time you guys need to go home acts chapter 2 verse 1 won't you read it do you have it there on that page? Most of it. Okay. When the apostles... You know what? Let me do it. Yeah, let me... I messed you up. While he's doing that, I'm going to read, I'm going to read verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Okay, so they're in a room. They're in... In what city are they in? Jerusalem. And the Bible says that in Jerusalem... Suddenly, some amazing things begin to happen. Go ahead and read, starting at verse number two. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. So all of a sudden, wind begins to blow. But if that wasn't weird enough, what happened in verse three? And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. Fire comes down in the room. But that's not all. Read verse four. And they were all filled with the filled Holy Ghost. Filled with the Holy Ghost, okay? 
and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. As the Spirit gave the, them utterance. And this, and this is where I say, listen, it's too long to, for you to read the rest of the chapter. Let me just tell you what happened. They're in that room. They must have got loud because a crowd began to gather. People from all over the world. Because verse 5 says they were in Jerusalem and there's nations from all over the world. Which is fulfilling what, what Jesus said in Luke 24, isn't it? Again, what did Jesus say? Repentance, remission of sins, in what name? In Jesus' name. Uh, among all nations, beginning in what city? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. The crowd begins to gather, and I just tell the story. They're there. Some say they're drunk. Some want to know what's going on. Peter stands up, and he says, no, 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 no. This ain't like you think it is. They're not drunk. This is the Holy Ghost that it was promised by the prophet Joel. And then he begins to preach to them about Jesus. He says, you didn't just kill a, a, a good man. You didn't just kill a prophet. You killed the one that was Lord and Christ. And I take them to verse number 37, and I have them read verse 37, what the, what the, uh, the crowd then said to the apostles. Can you read that for me? Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Okay, they were convicted in their heart. Peter's preached to them. They feel bad. What are we supposed to do, they say? Read that. Read that. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do? Now, remember, they're asking Peter, who was there in Luke 24, what shall we do? What city are they in? Jerusalem. They're in Jerusalem. Who's gathered there? People from all over the world, right? Now, Peter was there. When Jesus said in Luke 24 what they were supposed to preach, he told them why he had suffered and died. He told them, and help me remember again, preach re repentance. repentance. What else? Remission. Remission of sins. Say it loud. Remission of what? Remission of sins. And do it in what name? In Jesus' name. Among all nations, starting in what city? At Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. It's Jerusalem. It's among all nations. The people want to know what they should do. And Peter begins to preach. Acts 2. I have them read this. Verse number 38. Then Peter said unto them. Then Peter repent. said unto them. Pause. Okay, read this to me and I want to hear it. First word. Repent. Repent. What did he say? Repent. That's what Jesus said. Read on. What else did he say? And be baptized every one of you. And in be the name. baptized every one of you in what name? Of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission of sins. Does that sound familiar? It does. It does sound familiar. Where do they get that? Jesus told them to preach that. And what will happen if you do that? And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Which if I'd had time in Luke 24, Jesus had said, and you will, the, I'll send the promise of my Father upon you. I, I then say, listen, that is exactly what they were preaching is exactly what Jesus told them to preach. And that's what I'm here to tell you today. You can receive the Holy Ghost. Repentance is for you. Baptism in Jesus' name is for you. And when you get baptized in Jesus' name, it's for the remission of your sins. It's that simple. It's that simple. I just did that. I don't know what. I'm afraid to ask. What time is it, Frank? 901, 10 minutes. I'm one over. Stand. Here's what I want to tell you tonight. You can teach a Bible study. If you're here tonight and you want to teach a Bible study, you can teach a Bible study. Furthermore, as the musicians come, I would like to tell every guest that's in this place tonight, can I just tell you that the same words that Jesus said, if you're here and you've never repented of your sins, you need to repent of your sins. If you're here and you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus, if you're here and you've got the Holy Ghost already but not yet been baptized in Jesus' name, allow me to tell you tonight that you need to be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. You can be baptized tonight. Is there anybody that's glad you were baptized in Jesus' name? And finally, I'm here to tell you, and you shall, if you repent, and if you get baptized in Jesus' name, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues. Church, I'm here to tell you, this works. It's that simple. It works. All you got to do is just teach it. There's people out there that want it. I know it's after 9 o'clock, but is there anybody that wants to teach a Bible study? I want to tell you, you can teach it. You don't need pastor to teach it. You don't need somebody else to teach the Bible study. And if you have a hunger to teach Bible studies, this is what's going to happen. God's going to drop people in your life that are going to say, I'd, I'd like to know more. You're going to feel that urge and maybe you're going to feel the little bit of fear. You need to push past the fear and ask the question, Ken, would you like a Bible study? And you can teach them about this apostolic faith, this new birth truth 
that saved your soul and it's still saving people today. You know what I'd love to see? I'd love to see everybody in this house get stirred. You're not too young to teach. You're not too old to teach. I'd love to see everybody in this house stirred to teach Bible studies. This is what we're going to do. I'm done. I know it's after nine. I know you get up early and some of you have to go. And if so, I understand. I really do. But I'm going to give an altar call tonight. And I'm giving it, first of all, to the church. If you're here tonight and you want to teach Bible studies, but maybe there's been something holding you back, just buy one and teach it. Just read it. The Word of God works. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Man, if I could get 10 of you to do this. Oh, hallelujah. There's a bunch more than that that want to do this, that can do this. I'm going to give an altar, for you, an altar call for you. If you want to step out in this aisle, we're going to begin to sing here in just a moment. And I want you to come to this altar and say, God, I may not know how, but I'm going to do it. If you open the door, I'm going to walk through the door. So right now, I'm opening this altar for you right now. But I'm also, on a Wednesday night, going to just tell somebody, if you're here and you've never received the gift of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues, God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost tonight. If maybe it's been a long, long time since you received the Holy Ghost, maybe you had it as a child, God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost. If you're here and you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, this preacher wants to tell you, God still brings remission of sins through the name of Jesus in baptism. You can be baptized tonight. The water's warm. What doth hinder you to be baptized? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, this altar's open. Everybody in this house that wants to teach a Bible study, I want you to come up close. I want you to come up close. Or if you're here and you need the Holy Ghost, I want you to come up close. We're going to pray here in just a moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, there's still people coming. Let's, let's come close to this front. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got two groups of people here. If you're here and you want to teach a Bible study, I want you to raise your hand right now. Both your hands to heaven. If you're here and you need the Holy Ghost, I want you to lift your hands to God. If you've never repented of your sins, that'd be the start. Tell God you're sorry. He can forgive you. You can get the Holy Ghost tonight. Right now, I want us together to lift our hands. If you want to be involved in Bible studies, I want somebody to say, God, use me. God, I give you my voice. I give you my mouth. I give you my mind. You don't have to be a theologian to teach a Bible study. Come on, I want us to lift our voices. Young ladies, let's pray together. Come on, young men, I want us to pray together. You don't need your dad to teach the Bible study. You can teach it. You don't need your mom to teach the Bible study. You can teach it. You don't need a preacher to teach it. You teach the Bible study. You don't need a saint that's been in church for 40 years to teach about. You teach the Bible study. Right now, I'm just looking for somebody that will say, Lord, use me. I want to do it. Come on. He knows how to put the pieces together. Hallelujah. 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 Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need the Holy Ghost, let God touch you right now. If you need a renewing in your spirit, God can renew you in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We're going to be dismissed here in a moment, but I want the church to begin to pray. Oh, in Jesus' name.